You are live. So I'm just going to invite everybody to find a comfortable seat and make sure that you have a pencil that you can take some notes with and the maps that we have printed out for you. It's our hope that we start today with like a good attitude and finish today with some post uh, plant maps. Yes. <laughs> Crowdsourcing at its finest. I should. I did. I did introduce everyone. This is Melanie Lester and her daughter Iris. They've been members of the club for a little less than a year or so, and this is an awesome like idea that you came up with and you developed this whole thing. So hopefully we can get some data and you know, maybe make this a tool that we can use for the club in the future going forward. Right? Yeah, I'm really hopeful that this is a way that Iris and I can contribute to a club that has been so welcoming and awesome for us this whole year. Or so. Um, I guess I guess we can just get started. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much. Appreciate you taking the time. So, go ahead, Iris. You can help me with this slide. Um, so we're going to talk today about pictorial uh, host plant maps that we can make for the web club, which will help us identify and go to some host plants um, in a few local parks, uh, including the Heron Run. Cromwell Valley, and then the Lost Pond Trail um, is part of Gunpowder, the main area in Gunpowder. Are all of you kind of familiar with the those? Hammerman area? The, um, not Hammerman, it's like the area that's right off of Del Aero Road. Uh, okay, yeah, okay, I, 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 okay. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. So like right as you get to that area of the park, there it's divided by a, a pedestrian tunnel right, that goes yes. under the, the uh -huh. Del Aero. Yeah, okay, so okay. right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, there. They did uh, four foraging classes there. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so you're very familiar with it. You can go on foraging class. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, go ahead and you can get to the... First, I'd like to just introduce Iris and myself, um, because um, unlike maybe most of you, we have very little Lepidopterous knowledge. We are total beginners. Um, but we are lifelong learners, uh, hopefully, and like all of you. And we're martial artists and visual artists, and we're love club movies. So that's that's us. Um, this year, we're new members of the love club. Um, and my family, we run Ghost Kung Fu right down the street. So that's our martial arts outlet. Yeah, and then visual arts, we both are avid nature journalists. Um, so we like to go out in the field and draw what we see, and that's a good way for us to learn. So if you ever want to talk nature journaling, I'm happy to talk about nature journaling with you too. Um, so that's us in a nutshell. Um, I have had such a good time about uh, or learning about moths and butterflies this year, uh, and I would be happy to talk with you today about creating this collaborative pictorial or illustrated map that will help us find them. So um, I just wanted to highlight some of the events that we took part in this year that made us so happy to be in the Left Club. We went to many moth nights. We went to our new friend's garden. Phyllis was so kind to invite us to see how she sets up her garden to attract moths and butterflies. Um, we got to go to the Ladu Butterfly House, and we went to many informative and exciting meetings here <coughs> at the Natural History Society of Maryland. Um, and then we got to, in our house, raise Promethea, Luna, and Imperial moth caterpillars. And that was really good for us because we could see them um, go through the different end stars, and that made us more curious and more excited to feed them and find all of these host plants. And that's kind of where we realized um, everybody was so quick to share these awesome caterpillars, and then that sent us on a hunt. like digging around, like, well, how do I feed them? Like, where am I going to find these different plants? And that made me really excited and curious about um, about how everyone else feeds their caterpillars. Um, and that's how we had the idea to go and um, try to make this, this a map project. To have all of your uh, caterpillars completed? Um, not yet. We have two remaining imperial uh, moth caterpillars, uh -huh. um, and we were told at the meeting that we brought them in, that they will get to be the size of hot dogs. And right now, they're like, well, maybe not. They're maybe like 90% hot dog size. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. like almost there. They're really yeah. filling out nicely. <laughs> like a mini one? 
That's what no. I was thinking, like little Vienna sausages. No, they're, they're quite big. So, yeah, they are small. Yeah. yeah, so I, I see, I, I don't want to put them on me. I understand that they can make, give you an itchy rash. Um, but you haven't had that happen? Oh, okay. And I touch everything. Oh, super, very good. Maybe I'm, you've developed an immunity. That's right. I <laughs> use, it has like super. I powers. use gold. Okay. Be very careful about it. Okay, yes, I know. I use what? I use yeah. Okay. Little prickly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, these have a lot of fibers that come off. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And that's the part that I understand yeah. that if they have a lot, then sometimes that means that's that they can problem. irritate your skin. Yeah, so they're super cool. They're getting big. Um, and we've had such a nice time, and everyone has been so welcoming, and we just wanted to figure out a way to give back to the club. So that's what Thank we're you. trying to do now. <laughs> All right. Um, so the the host map. Um, yeah. Okay. So um, our host map idea um, came about to try to call uh, try to um, relieve some problems. It would hopefully <clears throat> raise awareness and interest uh, in the local natural world, like get people outside. It's like, oh, you have a guide that will bring you outside. Um, to see some exciting things. And um, it'll help us better study the moths and butterflies in their natural habitat because it's going to show us where to look for them. Um, and then it will help us feed the caterpillars that we are raising at home. So this is another resource that we can share um, to keep us passionate about the, the caterpillars that we can raise at home. And then it'll also um, hopefully prohibit us from foraging too much in one area I noticed that there are certain types, like a spice bush is so dense everywhere, but other plants like um, the black walnut, I was only finding in certain places where the leaves were low enough that I could reach them. And so I was thinking to myself, if I have trouble reaching them, um, maybe if my friends and other enthusiasts are also having trouble reaching them, wouldn't it be nice if we knew other places to look? Yeah. So, um, so it will hopefully stop us from taking the leaves from any one plant so much that it uh, makes it hard for other insects and moths and butterflies to rely on them in nature to get what they need. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are we making? Like, what's our solution? Uh, this pictorial map, um, it's, a, it's got a few different names, but basically it's more artistic than technical. But ours is going to be a little bit of both because we're going to have to make it accurate enough that you can find your way on the trail, but still really charming to look at. So that way, maybe new members who are not as um, used to getting in on the trail as some of us are uh, will be drawn in a little bit more. So it's a little bit of an ad for getting out and doing the activity too. Um, I like that the um, pictorial or illustrated maps. We'll use a lot of symbols to describe features um, that you uh, will run into in nature. Like, for example, um, traditionally, uh, boats would be used to describe the direction of uh, the really strong trade winds. Um, so if you see old sea maps, then a lot of times the scale of everything is kind of widgy, but you can find the accurate um, trade winds because they will show you the book. I think that's, that's pretty interesting. Um, so we can utilize some symbols like that too, like perhaps in an area where we're seeing a lot of activity, we can have a big munchy caterpillar that it appears on the, the map, but it will signify to us like, oh hey, there's a, there's a lot to pay attention to over here. We get some clip art of the very hungry caterpillar yeah. from the kids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wherever yeah. they start eating papers. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then another thing that I really like about the style of map making is that um, there are sometimes anthropomorphic uh, characteristics, like the mountains will not just represent a single mountain, but it will represent um, like a very big mountain, and suddenly it looks much more like a person than you would expect it to, or that it, that it does in nature. So there are some like really um, exciting and sometimes fantasy-based things that can help draw people in to uh, pay more attention to the maps. 
Yeah. You're oh. be dragonflies. Yeah, exactly. We can be dragonflies. <laughs> That's such a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this map is an example of a um, theme park map for um, a Moomin, Moomin Valley. I, I don't know if, if anyone is familiar, but I really like. Um, like the Moomin trolls? Yes, like the Moomin oh, yeah, trolls. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So here you can see, like, the paths are quite obvious. Um, so this would be like our trails. You can see where the trails would go through our park. Um, and then really um, exciting bits to pay attention to would appear as a larger image than what maybe uh, it is in reality. So we could have our trails depicted, and then suddenly there is a really big drawing of a tree that we will all be looking for. Um, and again, it will just show us, like, hey, this is the important part here on this map. Oh, okay. Um, this is a great example of how to do this by hand. Today, we're going to look at some ways to create these maps digitally, but um, we'll play for you um, a short video, or maybe even just a clip of the video, how to um, <coughs> do something similar with your pen and pencil if this is something that you would like to try uh, at home. Um, today, we're going to gather information and we'll share it all right away. So if you want to um, take home the maps that you draw on while we're together, then maybe you could make your own map um, that you can also wait and and get a map from us in the screen. <laughs> so Iris, do you want to play that for us? Invent names if you like. 
I've been Ribbon, for example, the stream where I took a bath with my wallet, all my documents inside, or the small Amazon River due to the presence of mosquitoes in summer. A lot of bluebells here in spring. Uh, Sunset Place, uh, Johnny's Land, my nice neighborhood, or Extinct Leoness. This is a Latin phrase that means here there are lions, used on the old maps to indicate unexplored and maybe dangerous land. Remember, this is your map, and it's up uh, to you to find the right balance between a topographic uh, scientific approach and a emotive, personal, even silly, and they say, touch. Tell the people why your mood is a special place. Step number three, retracing. Now, we have all the elements we want, more or less. We need to organize them better, correct mistakes, improving lettering, decide if you want to uh, delay or adding something more. Oh, we have a lot of things to do. We need a piece of tracing paper. When we design maps, text come first. They need to be clear. Lines and drawings will come later. Lettering is a big and fascinating word, but we don't have uh, too much time here. Maybe, maybe next time. But retracing our first trembling experiment you will see the lettering will get more and more precise and clear. A good map needs a border, so we can do it. If something went wrong, don't worry and keep going. We'll fix it later. A real map needs a compass too. Where can we find a compass? Simple, on books or on the internet? When you find something you like, with your tracing paper, you can do it. We trace an object is a good way to learn and to observe and to remember. And now, rewrite the words. We need uh, to slightly compress the small Amazon River, for example. When you write this letter, you keep a little piece of paper under your hand to keep the paper clean and avoid uh, to damage the writings already made. Blue bell in speed. Spring! Oh, gosh! Every time I've done a lot of spelling mistakes, even when I write in Italian. Okay, but here, now, we have something that uh, starts to look like a map. Step number four, retracing again. <laughs> so, um, I think this is a really charming video, and we can include a link to it in the um, video, maybe? Uh, sure. Or, or to um, maybe in the description, too, so that way we can find it easily. Um, and a lot of these steps we're going to kind of make easier for ourselves today by doing it digitally. So there's less um, retracing, 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 and we can do that in Illustrator by using layers. Okay. All right. So what we're proposing is that today we, um, with the help of the club members, create a collaborative map, um, and we can all try to contribute our knowledge uh, to make this map as comprehensive as possible. Um, I'm thinking that we can use all trails, um, these little maps that we have printed for you, thank you Matthew, um, yeah. as our base maps. And then we can add details in the keys and, um, and, and what we know right away without even leaving the room. Because I think that between our group, we probably have some good ideas of where to find many most plants. So just like in the video, um, I would like to go over kind of what our steps will be like, our process, so you have an idea. Um, we're going to today um, identify some local host plants and make a key. So we're going to agree upon what plants we want to include on our map 
that will benefit our group. So um, if we know we really love, like Phyllis, I know you want to know where all the milkweed lives, right? Because you know so much and can take care of the monarchs. So like we can help each other find new places that has a lot of milkweed. Um, and then we'll decide on a few landmarks to include. Uh, we've printed some all trail wheel maps that we can use as reference as our base layer. Um, and then we'll choose like a relevant color scheme. This will be lower priority because when we redraw them, they will get colored maybe in a different way. Um, and then we'll draw the ma major trails and roads. And we can add icons and landmarks. We'll include moths and butterflies and people in our final map so that way it is specific to our group. Uh, and then we can harmonize the composition, make it aesthetically pleasing. Um, and then I'll ask for another round of feedback. So I'll share these images with you. I'll be like, hey, everybody, what did I forget? Or what, is, what have I made too small, too big? Like, where, where's something else that we know of now that we didn't know of back in September when we made our first draft? Um, and then we'll make a finalized, completed map. And then we'll print and share them with our love club. Look, love club friends. So um, I hope that that can happen in the very beginning of spring and 2024. So that way, as things emerge and they're ready to start eating, we have an idea of where we can start feeding ourselves. Uh, so the winter work, there are a few things that we'll have to do um, when we're not together. Uh, over the winter months, Iris and I are going to produce like a more refined and aesthetically pleasing version of the maps. Um, and then our plan again is to, to have them printed and ready for you. Um, does anyone have any right now? Yeah, any feedback um, now in the early, early start of this project? Um, that would be helpful to guide us in the right direction as we begin. Because I am sure that you all have oodles more experience than we do. So if there's anything that you're like, oh, you know, this is a good idea, but what if we did it this way? Oh, for our area, yeah. would, like, would we like, would, let's say, park trail or like double rock park or? Um, mm -hmm. Like um, Marcy Point, but it could be more than one. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. So we have the same thought. Um, we were going to start with three maps today. One that was in the um, Lost Pond area in Gunpowder, and that's like two different trails there. Um, and then Cromwell Valley, and the Cromwell Valley map is actually pretty enormous. So there are a lot of options there. And then the third one that we brought um, for today is the Herring Run, because we think that many people will be able to identify some things in Harry Run. Um, but in the future, if you like doing this, and if this is helpful for you, I say like, let's get a map of Double Rock too. And let's, you know, we can just make maps slowly of all of the parks that we like to go to as a team. Um, but those were the three that we right. have prepared for today. Yeah. There's a park that you know well. Yeah. You know, this is your chance to share that. You can do the Double Rock part too. Yeah. I don't remember seeing milkweed. No, but there is a ton of spice bush. Yeah, yeah. I found. Um, I thought that I knew the like best location with the most dense uh, spice bush at Double Rock, kind of like near the parking lot. But then we went to the area where there's that gazebo, where the blue and the yellow trail kind of converge. Do you know where I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, in the back. Yeah, like close to where you get to the community garden. There's a ton of spice bush there. Yeah, so that was exciting. So um, I'm going to put this place that is like about there. Well, Marshy Point, did you say Marshy Point too? I'm sorry. Did you say Marshy Point too? Well, yeah, uh, mostly where like I go yeah. to play is at Cromwell Valley Park and Marshy Point. And then anything else besides that is far. Right. Not really far but yeah. Like there's like certain like I know yeah. Marshy Point, but like there and but there is also like certain things like I know where I need to find um star um sugar not the point of it. Gum. What is that? Sweet gum. Sweet, sweet gum. gum. Yeah. Now sweet gum. Cromwell 
had one tree. Oh. One tree only. Yeah. But more queen has involved. Oh. And then um like oak. Oak's big for a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So more uh Karma will have a lot of oak when those little trees grow, but I don't know if we'll live that long. Mm -hmm. I'm very impatient <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. yeah, very impatient. But um yeah, so it's, and I know walnut's weird because it's, I think it's changed a lot. It seems that so did you think Washington had more um um walnut or um brown walnut? Mm -hmm. I've seen them. Yeah. Yeah. I um Iris and I did find some um, black walnut in Cromwell, so we, we marked it on the map already. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think there's some I'm like, what else is like wild chair? We've got to find a lot of wild chair. Wild chair. Yeah. 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 That yeah. eats a lot. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 yeah, so I noticed that in well, the meadow. Well, there's two, you mean two of the poplars? Or? Yeah. 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 We found some that are short. They're like young. Um, it's the Cromwell Valley, and kind of like on the opposite of the bird watching path, you know, where I mean, mm -hmm. there's like the bird watching loop. And then if you go on the other side, there are some young poplars that you can actually reach. But we'll show you. We started to mark those too. There, yeah. There's a person in my neighborhood that is selling tulip poplar honey. And oh. I should ask her where, where the bees oh, are yeah. from. I guess I hadn't even thought. So cool. I had made that connection until now. There must be a bunch of them around if she's doing Wow. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Oh, yeah, that's very cool. Okay, I'll keep my notes uh, out here. So if you all think of more suggestions as we go. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, the trees as they mature get so tall. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I think now I just thank you for your time and attention, and we'll begin the map making portion. I don't mm -hmm. have anything else like presentation wise, unless you have. Questions, comments, or suggestions that could help us get off to a strong start. All right, ready to go. I'm going to pause this recording and then if we have maps to show later, I can yeah, film okay. those. But we'll just... Okay, so the last, um, I'm going to share with you my contact info. So that way, if, um, if you all find something that you would like to add to the maps, um, then you can send me an email and we can add it to what we're working on. Or if you are in a pinch and suddenly you find yourself with some um, caterpillars that you weren't anticipating yeah. in that moment, uh -huh. then let us know. Maybe we have already mapped the kind of host plant that you're looking for. Um, but that's. I also included um, the Maryland plant, plant Atlas and the Maryland Biodiversity Project because I think that there are two. Um, resources that we'll utilize a lot as we continue to develop this uh, mapping project. Uh, and then lastly, before we sit down and, and start making our maps, I just wanted to share some of these amazing books that we got from the Baltimore County Public Library um, to kind of give you ideas about what the um, illustrated maps can be, not just um, a straight technical map of something so exciting and engaging, particularly for like young learners and those of us who are drawn with our eyes, like many butterfly lovers, I think, <laughs> drawn with our eyes into something that's very exciting. So yeah, please feel free um, as we're developing our maps, if you just need a break or a stretch of legs, you want to grab a book, that is totally fine. Which book is your favorite? My favorite? Okay, so that's really a hard question. I was pointing out to Iris before we got started this um, illustrated map of the Ghostbusters movie. Mm -hmm. So it's um, really beautiful drawings of the area in Manhattan that the movie takes place, and then um, the paths of the characters as the movie progresses. It's like really sort of charming. And then um, this is maybe my other favorite that is directly related to what we're doing. 
it's maps of the nat uh, national parks, but they're all illustrated in this like really fun <coughs> and engaging way. So um, they're pictorial or uh, illustrated maps, but they're all of our national parks. So I think that I, I borrowed this from the library, and this is one that I'll hunt down and get a copy for myself because I like it so much. Nice. So those are those are the two that if you can only look at two today. Okay, Iris, switch seats with me, but then you can hold the laser pointer so you can point at the um, the maps if you need to. Yeah, we just you know to let people who, who may be watching the recording see like, what, what what's the next step in the project? Yes, yeah, so the next step. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yep, you're good. Yes, yep. all right. So the next step will just be to take this information that we've gathered from our club members um, and we'll go back to the studio and we'll start to mark on the maps um, so some more. We'll even go back to the parks and confirm some of the locations that have been suggested. You know, there were some like suspended areas. It's yeah. like, I think that they should be here. So we'll go into that too. And then um, through the winter months, uh, Iris and I will develop some more artistic and refined drawings that uh, we'll will be exciting to look at and also informative for Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. <laughs>